outstanding coaches in our Star Watch. Forget individual players tonight. We're looking at these two programs, what they have done in the decade. Michigan State with a national championship and four Final Fours. Carolina with two national championships and four Final Fours. Two of the elite in college basketball. And there are two of the elite coaches in college basketball, both coming off milestone wins. Tom Izzo just passed Judd Heathcote for the Michigan State all-time record. Roy Williams just picked up number 600. You see the sling on the arm of Roy Williams. Suffered a torn labrum, had surgery less than a week ago. He's not feeling 100% right now, but he will coach as he did Sunday night against Nevada. Look at the starting lineup for Michigan State with the great backcourt. Kalen Lucas, the reigning Big Ten Player of the Year, along with Darrell Summers, Raymar Morgan, Del Bonero, and a freshman to Garrick Sherman in the starting lineup. For Carolina, just one returning starter, Deion Thompson, but a lot of talent. Marcus Ginyard, a fifth-year sen uh, fifth senior. As Dick told you, keep an eye on Larry Drew coming off his best game of the season on Sunday. Deion Thompson, plain and simple, has been terrific, terrific so far this year for the Heels. Carolina, 6-1, ranked 11. Michigan State, 5-1, ranked 9. This is going to be fun. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You mentioned Drew coming off a big game against a good Nevada team. He played really well. Made two big threes late. Had ten assists and only one turnover. That was his classic. That was his best game thus far in a Tar Heel uniform. So Carolina beat Michigan State, as you know, twice last year. They didn't beat them. They pummeled them. You're right. We were there. That beating yeah. they gave them over Ford Field last year in the challenge, they could have taken on the Pistons. They were unbelievable. And you could see the record that Michigan State has there in the bottom of your screen in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, 5-4. and four. The only, the only Big Ten team in the history of this event with a winning record in this event as Carolina Ed Davis on the inside they strike first there's the interior size the strength their game is based on really being effective down in the low boxes now Carolina with depth in the front court of Michigan State with depth in the backcourt Raymar Morgan again battling injuries this year a badly sprained ankle getting closer to 100 percent they need a big game from him Got to come out of the Gonzaga game, turn his ankle again. He missed like 22 days of practice. Tough defense right now. The Carolina fans like it. Shot clock at four. <laughs> Off the rim for Lucas. Carolina ball. What an atmosphere here at the Dean Dome tonight. So Davis with a basket and a rebound in the first minute for Carolina. Thompson knocks it down. The two inside, Thompson and Davis, at 39 in that game against Nevada. You know, Dan, I look at, when I see Davis, reminiscent of when I look at the kid at Georgetown Monroe. You expect them to break out yep. with like a 25-12 on a regular basis. They're so talented. Averaging about 13 and 10 so far this year. Del Monroe hammers it down for the Spartans. You know, Rowe almost went to North Carolina. That's right. Last second, he picked the Spartans of Michigan State. I remember the knee surgery that he came back from last year, much healthier this year. And Tom Izzo figures if Rowe's healthier and Morgan's healthier, he's got a chance to have a pretty good team. Deion Thompson keeps playing like that. Roy Williams has a chance to have a pretty good team. You know, Thompson's become now a number one option. Last year, he had to be like the fourth or fifth option. There's the ball going down inside. There he is with a good first step. Good explosive first step to the basket. It's a triple threat position. Having a big, big year. You know, it's funny. When people talk about Carolina, they talk about Davis. They talk about Drew taking over for Lawson. They talk about Henson, a freshman on the wing. Nobody talks about Thompson in a, uh, as much as they should. All he's doing is averaging almost 18 points and nine rebounds a game. You know, he really played well last year when Hansborough was out of four yeah. games. Average 17 a game. Rowe, backdoor feed, Summers. And the follow is there for Garrick Sherman, 6'10", freshman out of Kenton, Ohio. You know, Sherman and Nixon share time in the post. Give them some size. Wow, what a drive there by Drew. I tell you, Drew, I think he's getting better and better with every game. He really is. I watched him play with so much confidence in a Nevada game. Not an easy job to replace the likes of Ty Lawson. Well, nobody replaces yeah. him. I mean, that backcourt was the best backcourt in America when you looked at Ellington and Lawson. Also lost hands were, of course, and Danny Green. Four starters gone from the championship team. Morgan strong off the glass. He went 0 for 7, Morgan, and that lost to Florida. 
They need him to be productive. He's so athletic. What an up and down start in this game. Michigan State wants to run. Carolina may not run, will not run as much as they have the last couple of years. Michigan State still wants to push it when they can. Long rebound out to Drew. Davis and one. That's where we want to bring the ball. I was talking to Mike DeCourcy before the game, the outstanding writer of Sporting News, and we both really feel that this kid has a tendency to be a little too passive. He's got a world of talent. He's got to be a little more assertive, a little bit more hungry, very unselfish. Now with the drive by Larry Drew, Dick. Yeah, nobody rotated over, finds the gap, goes right to the basket, great drive to the goal. Ed Davis, just a sophomore out of Richmond, Virginia, knocks it down. He's got five. He Thompson's got five. The two big guys have ten of their twelve. You know, he would have been drafted very high last oh, yeah. year based on the word potential, potential. Draymond Green in off the Michigan State bench. That's him with the ball. Good passer. Open look for Summers. A little strong on the three. Summers can shoot the three. Green gives him a very versatile play. Yeah. Among the leaders on the team in just about every category, he's taken the place of Rowe. Graves turns it over. Here comes Lucas. Jet speed. He's got great quickness. The pull up from just beyond the foul line. No good. Ginyard battling for it. Sherman, nice pass to Summers, who misses the layup. Yeah, Summers had himself a little layup. I think that pass by Sherman was outstanding. Sherman getting about 10, 12 minutes a night. Two more for Davis. I love him. I think this kid could be an absolute superstar. I don't think he knows how good he can be. They know here in Carolina how good he can be. They won't stand it all. Stand it all nation, baby. Backdoor feed again, and the left-handed reverse of beauty for Morgan. And Raymond Morgan showed that agility, quickness. I'll tell you, Draymond Green's made two great passes since he came into the game. Yeah, he's got good feel for the game, good vision. 6'6", 235, he's battling with Davis. Sherman, the freshman, trying to deal with Thompson, who's got it now. You know, playing man-to-man, -man, I don't think you're going to see them stay in that man-to-man -man alone. I think you'll see them pack it inside. Held ball. Michigan State ball when we come back. A great start for North Carolina up six. Roy Williams, as you can see, not 100%. His story when we come back. Wanted to wait so that he didn't miss any practice. He needed a six-day window, and that's why the surgery was as late as it was, Dan. I tell you, Doris, he's going to make sure he takes his medicine. Didn't take it at halftime in the Nevada game, and it really hurt him. North Carolina with the ball in an early six-point lead. Ginyard is bumped before the shot. We've got John Henson in the game and now for North Carolina, the 6'10", 195-pound freshman out of Tampa for Michigan State. Corey Lucius has checked in. Lucas and Lucius in the backcourt together. Now they get even faster. Yeah, they're really talking about super quickness. Henson had a nice first half against Nevada. Scored seven points. The steal by Lucas. And he lays it in over Drew. Michigan State's gone small and quick. Lucas, Lucius, Allen, three guards, Rowe and Green up front. Giving up the size, trying to take advantage of the speed. I'm surprised he's still playing man-to-man. -man. I thought he would have really zoned and pack it in. I know he hasn't played much zone in his career, but I really thought when you look at the makeup of North Carolina, yep. make him shoot over the top end. And you still might see it. There's Tyler Zeller, seven-footer, in off the Carolina bench. And bringing down the rebound is Chris Allen. He can shoot the ball. Allen can really shoot from the perimeter. Oh, boy. Henson just got a piece. <laughs> just, just got a piece of that one. Nice interior feed and another one. Count the basket. Very unselfish play. Great giving up the basketball. Sharing it. Terrific interior passing. Congratulations to Roy Williams. And time is up. Yep. 600 wins for Roy Williams. Third fastest to 600. Watch the interior pass. There's the nice little dish. And Mr. Izzo broke the record at Michigan State for most wins. 341. Although Tom Izzo prefers to say that he and Judd Heathcote, because Judd was his mentor, he says, you know what, we have 681 <laughs> as opposed to I have 341. He's very humble. Yes. Drew for three. Got it. That's big. That's long, big. Long two. Excuse me. Long two for Drew. Hey, he looked really nice shooting that shot. They need somebody to step forward to make perimeter shots. 
Lucas playing a little bit off the ball when Lucius is in the game. They have options at the point. You know, most clubs, Dan, when they play against North Carolina, they're going to really pack it inside. Lucius. And he comes up with a long two. The answer for Lucius. His minutes are really increased. Last year, average about nine minutes a game. Now up to about 21. Yep. He's a sophomore. Three of the top seven in the Michigan State rotation are sophomores. Three others are juniors. Henson came in with the biggest reputation as a diaper dandy. Has to fill out a little bit, get stronger. Yep. But he's got a lot of skills. Right now, not strong enough to play inside. Not used to playing outside. He played point guard as a seventh and eighth grader before the growth spurt. Yeah, yeah. Seven, eight, he was six one then. Zeller too strong. Another rebound for MSU. Key thing both coaches said. Who controls the boards? Lucius again. And they're going to take a look to see if it's a two or a three. But another basket for Lucius and Dick right now. Tom Izzo's got to be happy. They're controlling the glass and they're getting down the court in a hurry. Well, making some perimeter shots too. That's always a plus. They got that one loss to Florida. They out rebounded Florida 42 to 24. Shot 55% to 41% for Florida. So you said, how did they lose? Two factors. 23 turnovers, and Florida went 22 for 25 on a free throw line. Let's take a look at this last basket by Lucius, a two or a three. That's a three. Well, that, That's I, a three. I agree with you. That's a three. It's close. I got I one eye. But see, it's on my right. I can see with my right eye. It's on my right. <laughs> that was a three. It's a right, Danny Schulman. Danny, yes, it's a. It's definitely a three. Come on. Mike Kitts, Roger Ayers, and Brian Kersey are looking it over, trying to decide if it's a two or a three. That's a three. That's a three. I'd be shocked if they call out a deuce. This is the best look you've got. Take a look at the Looks right like there. a three. Well, <laughs> clear the telly, Dick. We can't see it. <laughs> that was the best look we had until Dick drew on it. Now, there it is right there. Look, look at my kids looking right at it. Yeah. Look at the zebra. Look and at the zebra looking yeah. right at it. And right away he said, I need help. And that's the right thing to do. Go to the monitor. It's within the rules. It's one of the things the officials can use the monitor for. Well, the reason he wanted to go to the monitor, he's behind him and he yeah. can't see the right yeah. foot. He cannot see the right foot, but it's definitely behind that line. Boy, a great couple of minutes off the bench so far for Corey Lucius, 5'11 sophomore out of Milwaukee. He's averaging better than five assists per game and showing he can knock down perimeter shots. One more look as they continue to look. The officials want to keep seeing this and are asking for other angles to try to determine definitively is it a two or a three? Why don't they come over and ask us? <laughs> yeah. We can help them out. I mean, we got three eyes. We think it's a three. They got a two. It's a two. Yeah. They They're telling us it's a two. Wow. Wow. Uh -oh. Came over my yeah. kids to say, the look, they got yeah. it's too difficult to tell. We thought it looked like a three to us. I don't know about you. What do you say? Should we get two eyes? <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. I, I agree with you. It's close, though. It's close. Either way, it's quite a run here for Michigan State. Now an 11 to 2 run. This is the Spartans' first lead of the game. Well, remember that point could be big late in the game. Good D by Lucius get Drew in front of him. Morgan stays on the ground against Henson. Turn around Thompson. The shot clock resets so a fresh 35. Tom Izzo saying that ball never hit the rim. And I think Coach Izzo's got a case. Yeah, he does. And they're going to have to figure this out again. I don't think that shot by Thompson hit the rim. And if it didn't, they should only have four or five seconds left on the clock. I don't think the ball hit the rim at all. From our angle, it doesn't look like it hit the rim. I don't know about that angle. Yeah, did. Got did. the rim. Got the, the rim. rim. Yeah. Got the rim. The zebras are right. I tell the you. zebras are right. I'll tell you. We're getting our money's worth out of the monitors tonight, huh? Yeah, hit the rim. Yeah, definitely hit the rim. So Carolina will have a fresh shot clock. It had wound down to 30, and they'll get the ball with 30. A number of things that you can go to the monitor for in the NCAA, and we have already seen a couple of them, whether it was a two or a three, and also a, a timing situation. Did the ball hit the rim? Should they get a fresh 35 or not? They're expanding that list every yeah. year. It seems to get yeah. bigger and bigger and bigger. Bottom line is you want to get the calls right. Yeah. However, you don't want to get to the point where you really take away from the flow of the game either. 
And Mike Kitt's coming over to tell us something now, one of the officials. So the shot clock had reset, but then they blew the whistle. Now they've got to go again to determine exactly how much time had come off the 35. It resets to 35 right there. And then when they blew the whistle to check if it hit the rim, how much time should it be left? So it looks like they'll go back maybe to 31 or 32, something like that. Maybe leave it at 30. Either way, they get a lot of time. You know, Dan, I really think you start taking away from the flow of the game. I really do. You had a game really going up and down. Uh, as Tom Izzo right now, he's not inviting them to dinner, I'll tell you that. Well, the 2-3 ruling didn't go Michigan State's way, and the didn't-hit-the-rim ruling didn't go Michigan State's way, although we've had benefit of replays that, of course, Tom Izzo has. Well, I was clear early, don't yes. doubt about it, yeah. hit the rim. I'm not convinced they were right on that call in the three. Deep three by Drew. I'll tell you one thing, Dan. He started to develop a real good stroke. Nobody back. Nobody back. They really get the ball out of them. Net up the court quickly. They sure do. Travel, though, a little bit too quickly right there. Travel on row. Double header action tomorrow night with more from the Big Ten ACC Challenge. It begins at 7.15 Eastern Time. Illinois takes on Clemson. Following that, it'll be number five Duke against Wisconsin. A Big Ten ACC action tomorrow night on ESPN. And tomorrow night also marks the official beginning, my friend, of Jimmy V. Week. Yes, sir. Jimmy V. Week will be out in New York for that. Lucius Allen. Hey, boy, are they getting it down the court. They yeah, really get up and down the floor. Transition. Run, baby, run. Utilizing the jet speed. Remember, we got quickness against size. Well, there aren't many teams that want to run with Carolina, but this is a little bit different of a Carolina team. More big guys, and this is a Michigan State team blessed with a ton of talent on the perimeter. They want to go, go, go. I think the good news right now for North Carolina is the group play of Drew. Yes. That's going to be big, big time news for them. Henson misses the three. Back come the Spartans looking for the lead. Spartans passed the ball really well. Last year lost that championship game. But remember the run they had, beating the lights of Kansas, Louisville, Connecticut. Offensive foul, Raymar Morgan. Tied at 19, timeout on the floor. Who's the program of the decade? You can decide. We'll tell you how next. We got that for you. Dickie V, what do you think? Well, you know, you take a look at the teams right there. Look at eight sweet 16s, two final fours. I think the edge for me has to go since the arrival of Roy Williams in North Carolina. The Chapel Hill, those two national titles. I mean, you win two national titles. I know Florida went back to back, but I'm going to give the slightest edge, and it is close, baby. But Doris, I I'm going to our hill country. Plus, I'm in Chapel Hill now. How's that Duke up at Duke? Well, not for that reason alone, but if you're in it to win it, it's about national titles, and though it's only been seven years for Roy Williams, they get my nod by a close vote, Dick. Wow, you and I think alike. That's scary. Of course, Roy Williams put together some of the numbers that you see on the Kansas side of the ledger on that graphic as well. Deion Thompson got off to a quick start. Oh, there's what John Henson can do. Well, you know, he could be an explosive athlete. He's going to fill out. Trust me, he's going to be a star here in North Carolina. It's just a matter of time. He's got skills. You can't teach 6'10 to go up and down the floor the way he can. Morgan inside. Off the low. Did he teach that? Or that, although he turned it over. And Summers gets the jam for Michigan State. Well, you don't want to save the ball under the other team's basket like that. That's just an assist the other way, Dan. Without looking between your legs. But it was, <laughs> it was, it was pretty acrobatic, huh? Pretty. Yeah. Tra Trish Nicole. Travis Ware into the game, number 43 for Carolina. Freshman out of Huntington Beach, California. California. His twin brother David also on the team. Dexter Strickland, another freshman, knocks it down. They're saying, okay, pack it in. We'll show you we can shoot. Strickland came in with the reputation of being a true guard. Trying to convert the place of point guard play. Yeah, good call there by Mike Kitts. The foul on Darrell Summers. That will be his second. Let's take a look at some of the ability Dick that John Henson has. Well, we're going to watch him right here on the offensive glass. Watch him come in from the weak side. There's the jam. Now, you can't teach this. Now, look at this quickness. A block shot. Now, he's going to save it between his legs, but unfortunately, it's up to the Michigan State basket. And a round of applause for Henson as he sits down. The McDonald's All-American, David Ware, takes his place. So, David and Travis, identical twins. One wears 34. One wears 43. Strickland is also out there. And Leslie McDonald is out there. Four freshmen are on the floor right now for Carolina. They got to play all these young kids after all the talent that they lost. Here's Travis Ware. 
Make the perimeter shot. That's a deuce. A long two for Travis, who's a little bit bigger, a little bit more of an inside guy than brother David, but showing some range on the jumper. You know, you better jump on North Carolina now, because come January, February, they're going to be lights out, tough to handle. Look at the speed. Look at the speed. Oh, what a recovery by Rowe. David Ware knocks it down. He says, my brother can knock one in, I can knock one in. Anything he can do, I can do better. Oh, listen to the Carolina faithful. Blue heaven. Blue heaven. Michigan State contributions from all uh, the freshmen, including Dick. First, Travis Ware, and then David Ware. And he just went a little jump shot. Strickland's knocked down a shot. Henson dunked the ball as Lucas is fouled by Travis Ware. Well, as you said, you better jump on them early. They're young, but they're getting experience. The numbers aren't big right there, but these guys have a lot of talent. Yeah, well, they contribute. They come off the bench, give them some quality minutes. Roy's not afraid to go to the bench, play a number of people. I think you'll see the rotation get a little bit smaller as they get into the ACC. Allen misses another three. He's got a good-looking stroke, and it made 10 of his last 20 entering this game tonight from beyond the arc. Strickland with a great step to the goal. You know, Strickland showed that explosive. I tell you, we didn't see that in New York. We didn't see that in New York, Danny. From out of St. Patrick's, Elizabeth. Great players there. A junior by the name of Gilchrist might be the best junior in the country. Can Lucas settle down the Spartans? Gets his man in the air. Carolina ball with numbers. Turns it over. Roy Williams' team has been turning it over oh, too much. That was a walk. That was a walk. We love to get away with it. We love the ice stop. Up and down pace. End to end action, huh? Subs coming in for both teams. Shut that ball too quickly. Draymond Green clears the glass, and Tom Izzo says, let's hold on just a minute. Walk it up the floor. Shot selection so important when you think of these programs over the years. Really up there at field goal percentage. Why? Shot selection. Lucius, some great minutes early for the Spartans. Lucas, good position inside. Green off the rim. Green, a good low post player. Big wide body. 6'6", 235. He can play guys bigger than him as well. Rebound by Delvon Rowe. Michigan State giving up height at every spot. Rowe starting to get back his athleticism. Yeah. Something that was lost after that serious knee injury. Allen will try it again. Not falling for him. What a rebound by Green. And he will shoot a couple. Wow. Now, Dick, take us to break as we look again at what we've seen from the North Carolina freshman here tonight. Well, I'll tell you, the diaper Danny's made a couple of good plays. We're going to watch right there. Look at Mr. Henson. Said, thou shalt not enter thy lane, but you don't want to throw it back under the basket. All right, Carl, thank you. Back here at the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. We're in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Carolina gets Michigan State. Maryland has won at Indiana. The ACC is on the board, still trailing 3-1. to one. The other game going on tonight is Virginia Tech at Iowa that will start or uh, is probably just underway over on ESPN 2. This is the 11th year of the event and the ACC has won the first 10. So the Big Ten looking for a little conference respect Dick and they've got there are some big games tomorrow night including Duke at Wisconsin Illinois at Clemson and it all wraps up with Florida State at Ohio State every game tonight and tomorrow on the ESPN family of networks. Stay a big factor in this game right now. Summers only played five minutes thus far and has like two points and he's been big for them. He had like 21 against Gonzaga shot eight for nine. They need his jump shot. He got two quick fouls and open the sideline. Larry Drew nine points. He's got a pretty looking jump shot. 
Yeah. Then it all we saw in New York. He's shooting it with confidence, squaring his body, good rotation. They're warming up to him here at the Dean Dome, aren't they? They were all, it was the, the biggest story about this team coming into the year. Could Drew step up and become a 30 minute a night starter? They're warming up to him in a hurry. Well, two major factors perimeter play and point guard play were really factors concerning people here. Summer short, rebound Morgan. I'm going to get Summers going. He's playing with two fouls. Morgan. Henson another block. I'm going to tell you what. Henson's starting to come alive. Saw it in a Nevada game. And you see a little glimpse of it right here, Dan. There it is right now. You can't teach that. What an asshole. Look at a long reach. Both blocks with the left hand, too. Which is very important. Yeah. You want to block the left hand. Look at Tom Izzo working at Sonic. What a beautiful guy. He's going to allow us to honor him. At my gala, we're going to honor Mr. Izzo and Tony Dungy for the Jimmy V Foundation. Again, Jimmy V Week starts tomorrow night, culminates with a Jimmy V doubleheader that we'll have for you next week at the Garden Butler, Georgetown, Indiana, Pittsburgh, Tuesday night from New York. Michigan State's missed nine shots in a row. Nice spin move by Rowe. I tell you, he showed that athleticism right there. Showed why he was one of the blue chip McDonald's All-Americans. Came down to North Carolina, Michigan State. Rowe and Morgan are both in there in the front court along with Sherman, Summers, and Lucas in the backcourt for the Spartans. And there's six to go here, but an up and down entertaining first half. Davis, too easy. He's big time. P.T. Beer, baby. He's a prime time performer. Great first step. Dad Terry played in the NBA for a dozen years. Boy, what a dynamic duo up front. Dion Thompson and Ed Davis. You know, they get better and better as Drew gets better yeah. because he just opens up all kinds of spacing for them if he can make his shot. A travel turns it back over. Let's go to Doris Burke. Well, despite five Final Fours in 11 years in the national title, don't try to tell Tom Izzo that Michigan State is basketball royalty. He constantly talks about programs like Duke and reaching the rarefied air of North Carolina. He tells his guys, to be elite, we've got to be elite and beat them. Dan, it is a big deal for him and his program to be here in Chapel Hill, and he wants nothing more than to get a win. And it's not just false humility by Tom Izzo. He feels they're a little bit short of getting up into that top tier of college basketball programs when it comes to winning, when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to tradition. He's very proud of what he's accomplished in 15 years, but he feels there's another step yet for his program to take. Well, you know, you talk about the tradition. Obviously, you get the edge when you think about places like this in Duke and Kentucky, but he's getting closer and closer. He's done an amazing job. He's trying to put together a Hall of Fame numbers. Yeah, no question about it. 341 wins, as we mentioned, just passed. Judd Heathcote for the all-time Michigan State lead. Do you know what Judd Heathcote said to him after he passed him? He said, why'd you lose last night to Florida? Why couldn't you win 24 hours earlier? <laughs> well, Judd was such a competitor as well. Took him a feisty guy, got in the Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Yep. Beautiful college Hall of Fame. I tell you, Tom is, uh, is one heck of a coach. He's a better person than he is a coach. Question. Just a terrific humanitarian. I can't wait to when we honor he and uh, Tony Dungy. What about two guys like that? Henson bleeding. That's why the delay. He's getting some medical attention, and they're cleaning the blood off the court as well. That's taken care of as Lucas steps to the line for Michigan State, the junior from Detroit. Both clubs have a 11 rebound edge on their competition. Every year, Michigan State up in the national leaders. Let's see how Henson got banged up. Ooh, got the elbow from Lucas. Lucas, one of two, three points on the night. And they say you become a basketball team, bro. You go on the road, play in environments like this. This is what gets you ready for league play and ultimately yeah. in March. Well, I remember last year up at Ford Field in Detroit, kind of a dress rehearsal for what turned out to be the national championship game. Carolina went up there in this event in Detroit. Big crowd and beat Michigan State 98-63. to 63. Tyler Zeller. You know, Zeller, the winners, Davis, Thompson. I got Sahensen. I mean, think about that size and how effective. They're really very skilled. Freshmen and sophomores, Dick, have 31 of the 36 points for Carolina. And think about what they're bringing in next year. Only the best player in America, according to all the experts. Harrison Barnes. Out of Ames, Iowa, 6'6". Two guards that can play as well. Morgan 
Slithers inside Ginyard. Rebound Zeller. Drew behind the back. That's Justin Watson of the game. Such a deep North Carolina team, but another Carolina turnover. Here come the Spartans. Morgan. And a block is called on Zeller. See, there's the turnover that leads to points on the other end. And that's the turnover Roy was telling us about yep. that really bothers him. I mean, they've been turning the ball over a great deal. That's been a problem. Still got a 10-point lead. Spartans to the line when we come back. Uh, here in Chapel Hill, it's the, the Big Ten's top team, at least in the preseason to pull Michigan State against Carolina, which was picked tied with Duke for the top spot of the ACC preseason to Carolina, which beat Michigan State twice last year, including in the national championship game, leading by 10 late in the first half. I'll tell you one thing, Paul B. and Cordy does a great job at ESPNU rating the classes as North Carolina number three behind Memphis and Ohio State. Reggie Bullock, Kendall Marshall coming in, and Harrison Barnes. He is going to be a favorite here. Combined those I mean, I'm gonna, who's who? Well, you I don't me. know who's who. I can't tell. You kidding me? <laughs> we got twins in our family. I still love them. I'm, I'm getting all over one of my twin grandsons as a Jake. He says, "Sorry, Papa, I'm not Jake. I'm Connor." <laughs> I mean, well, who knows if Roy Williams can tell them apart? Eight-point lead, Carolina. Both wears on the bench right now. Both made baskets earlier. Thompson, yes. What a first half he's had. Got to beat him to the ball. You can't let him come across that lane. A wide open Chris Allen, and he finally gets one to fall. It's a two for Allen. He should have been with a lot of guys close to the three-point line, yeah. but just not getting behind it. Drew, a little bit out of control, saved by Watts. Drew is like four for four. Thompson. What a player he's turned into. What a team this is going to turn into. The senior out of Torrance, California, having a big night. I tell you one thing, once again, look at the ACC, Duke and North Carolina, but tough. Lucius to Morgan. As Morgan with that athleticism, had the big game against the University of Massachusetts, struggled against Florida, went 0 for 7. Our only loss to the Gators. Ginyard is fouled. You know, I mentioned the Gators. They had another big win as well when they went and beat Florida State. But I'm telling you, they got a big game coming up next week with Syracuse. I think we were talking about the wear twins and how difficult this must be. Doris Burke has more. If our viewers are a little bit uh, skewed about which one is which, take comfort. Modern day coach Gary McKnight, a terrific high school coach, had trouble in his own right. A year ago, they were at practice, and for one full hour, he was chewing on Travis just into him so badly that when they took a water break, his brother David said, man, nobody should have to take that for the next hour. They went to a discreet location. They switched jerseys. And for the next hour, though he thought he was chewing on Travis, it was in fact David. When coach told Roy Williams that story, when he signed, we made both guys promise, hey, you'll never pull that with me, guys. I tell you, I've been there. I've been there. I know what you're talking about, Doris. That's brotherly love, though. One brother <laughs> saying, all right, you've had your share. Let's switch jerseys so he gets on my case for a while. Lucius off the screen. Thompson had it. Now Graves has it. They're going to be real dangerous when you get into the dating game, too. <laughs> During the final two minutes of the first half. Ginyard, fifth year senior. Missed most of last year with a broken foot off to Thompson. Green saves it, needs help, finds Morgan, who's on the race. Count it! And a block. Three-point play for Davis. Off the steal, the turnover. This is one of the great museums in college basketball when you come here to Chapel Hill. There's the steal, there's the dump down, there's the agility. You get a block call. Justin for Raymond Morgan. Boy, the potential for Ed Davis is staggering. He's 5 for 5 tonight, 11 points. Look at the numbers he put up just 48 hours ago against Nevada. A good Nevada team. Very good Nevada yep. team. Seven-point game in this building two nights ago, and it was nip and tuck until the final few minutes when Larry Drew made some big plays. Well, to get Johnson and Babbitt can flat out play. Johnson's got 57 points in three meetings against North Carolina. Biggest lead of the night for the Tar Heels. Played really a strong first half. They really did. Got good guard play. I was been a big concern. I got to keep getting steady guard play. 
Lucius off to Allen. Shot clock at 10. Allen, tough shot. Rebound Strickland. Real tough shot. His percentage is go up when he gets good looks. Ginyard spinning and finishing. Wow, Ginyard made like a star. Little Barishnikov there spinning in the lane. Lucas the miss. Three's not falling for Michigan State. Nice pass. Green the reverse. What a look from Chris Allen. Talented. Michigan State, Purdue. That's going to be some battle in that conference. Yeah. I love that Purdue team and how many company. Picked up the win over Wake Forest earlier tonight. The Big Ten leading the challenge. Three to one right now. Ooh, tough call on Kalen Lucas. Well, Thursday night at 9 Eastern, it's a Pac-10 battle for the Rose Bowl. Winner takes all in this in-state rivalry when Oregon State takes on Oregon. The Rose Bowl race on college football primetime on ESPN. You're a huge football fan. Thoughts on Charlie Weiss? Thoughts on Bobby Bowden? Well, you know, Charlie Weiss situation, you don't defend, you can't win. They've had a tough time tackling all year. And you score 38 against Stanford, you lose the game. I'll tell you one thing, if I'm the fighting Irish, you know what the guy I really like, too, one of them is going to stay on the collegiate Ooh, level. Great. You know, you like Kelly, obviously. What about Jim Harbaugh? I like everything about Harbaugh. His spirit. He played at Michigan 15 years in the NFL. He's done it at an academic school like Stanford. He would be a winner. Even though I'd give an edge if I had to go for Bill Cowher, <laughs> but they're not going to go for an NFL guy. So I would go, if I were making the choice, I like Jim Harbaugh. What do you think about him? Ginyard knocks him down. you got to feel happy for him. Tough year last year with a broken foot. Couldn't play on the national championship team. Back as a leader, a defender, an improved scorer, and a fifth-year senior here this year. You know, I disagree with those that say this is similar to 2005 when they win the national title with Felton, May, and those guys. In six, they come back only with David Noel. This team is much more talented. They got more back. Oh, right. wow. Yeah. Yeah. More back than what they added. Just three and a half seconds or so between the game clock and the shot clock. Michigan State holding. Lucas in trouble. Got it on the rim, but it's Carolina ball with some time. Strickland for three. Got it! What a big first down. What a big, big first down. Strickland with just about a second to go. Knocks it down. 50 points, Dick, put up in the first half by Carolina. I think the key has been the fact that their guards have really played well. When you look at Strickland, you look at Drew, we know about the front court, but when they get that balance, they're going to be tough to beat. What a performance thus far from Carolina, up 16 at the break. What a first half for Carolina here in Chapel Hill, a 16-point lead. This is the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. And what a run at the end of the half by Carolina. The Big Ten leading the challenge 3-1. to one. They've never won it. The ACC's won each of the previous 10 years. Let's look at the first half of the national championship game where Carolina led 55 to 34 up 21 points at the break and not that different here tonight tonight's Hall's game refresh as we look at tonight what jumps out at you right away 64 percent shooting absolutely and also the turnover ratio I know it looks like a lot of turnovers but eight but they weren't really significant in the layups and that was the concern for Roy Williams to minimize the turnover being utilized for a layup the other way. How do you think Tom Izzo feels about three games in a row against Carolina? Two last year, one this year, giving up 50 or more points in the first half in every one of them. Well, they shot the ball so well, and they had great balance. Guard play and inside play. Yeah, the guard play for Carolina, Drew and Strickland, terrific. And the outside shooting off the charts. Marcus Ginyard. And that's been the big question mark. The big question mark in scouting and analyzing North Carolina was where are they going to get perimeter shooting? Our friends, they're getting some tonight. Carolina's four for six from three-point range. Michigan State 0 for seven. Delvon Rowe, no. Rebound Thompson. Thompson had nine in the first half. Ed Davis had 12 points. Davis. Oh, he got fouled. He got fouled. They play on, saying Morgan got all ball. Summers, Michigan State needs one, and they get one. The first three of the game for the guys in green. Well, he's the guy that can do it. He and Allen. Thompson. 
Won't stay down, but he'll shoot a couple. You know, Summers and Allen are going to have to get really on fire from the trifecta. Summers got two quick fouls early in the first half, went to the bench. Here's Doris on a Michigan State adjustments. Well, there were plenty of things that Tom Mizzo had trouble stomaching. The rebounding loose balls battle going to UNC early. The couple of guys from North Carolina who couldn't make a shot made some shots. He said, hey, huge swing late in that half. The missed three and then the, the turnover, and then they come down and make a three. So that was a huge swing. He said, listen, he said, I felt like we got some good shots in that first half. And Dan, something he told us this morning, this is a team he thought was going to be a great shooting team. He's a little bit surprised at their struggles. Summers and Lucas, Lucas a much improved three-point shooter, just two for 12 in that first half. So plagued by their lack of ability to shoot the basketball, as they were in Florida again here tonight, Dan. And you add in Allen, two for six, missed all four of his threes. All three of those guys can shoot the ball, but they haven't shot it well yet tonight. And what also hurt them in that Florida game, turning the ball over 23 yeah. times. Draymond Green just checked in for Sherman, muscles it up and in. He'll have a chance for a three-point play, the foul on Davis. Well, terrific play down in the post. There's a big, strong, wide body. Great footwork in there. There he is with the crossover. Great move on the interior by Green. Dick Green's a guy who really played well in the NCAA tournament a year ago. And with the departure of Goran Sutan, Green's a guy getting a lot more minutes, a little undersized, but he can play the three or the four, and he's got a wide array of skills. You know, Sutan was such a good rebounder, one of the premier rebounders on the team, obviously, and they miss Sutan. You know who else they miss? Not just for the numbers he put up, Travis Walton, the defense, defense. the leadership. But you know, you can say about every team. Yeah. They missed. I mean, look at Hansbro. Yeah. Take over. Oh, no, there's no dispute with that. Lawson and yeah. Ellington. Danny Green as well. They lost four key players off the national championship team. Every shot's falling in. How did that baby go in? Larry Drew in double figures. Morgan lays it in the assist to Lucas. So one thing you better do after a score, you better get back in transition quickly. Thompson. Oh, double dribble now. Ball still alive. Michigan State's got it. And they give it right back. Morgan and Rowe, neither one of them took charge there. Got to back that ball out, settle down. Will Graves. Why settle down? Everything they're throwing up. It's like the Atlanta Ocean. That baby's like the Atlanta, Atlanta Ocean, the rim. Look at the three point shooting for Carolina. Pretty good, huh, for a team that's not supposed to shoot the ground? I'm going to throw the scouting report away. Morgan is fouled. I'm going to throw the scouting report away. It's a joke. This scouting report means nothing to all these experts. What do they know? Hey, sing the praises of Larry Drew, would you? I'll tell you one thing. You better sing his praises. Look at that baby going in. Are you kidding me? His daddy couldn't make that shot. And his dad was a pretty good player. Look at this, though. He can't believe it. The shots are falling in every possible way. Morgan knocks it down. Just showed you the numbers on Drew. One turnover tonight, double figure scoring Sunday against Nevada. Ten assists, only one turnover. Game by game, getting better and better running the show for the Tar Heels. You know, I feel, Dan, if you look at all the numbers right now, I mean, just being around the game, statistically, you got to think that North Carolina's going to get a little quiet and there's going to be a little long. This team is too talented to just be put away. Michigan State, I think, is going to go on the spurt. How about some big games coming up? Both of these teams are going to play Texas in the next couple of weeks. Carolina's also got a game on Saturday at Kentucky. You know, Texas along with Kansas might be the two best teams in America. I mean, you're talking about pure talent. Texas lost the kid Ward, though. That's a big loss anytime you lose a key guy in the rotation. Good position inside. Davis, two more. I'm telling you one thing. Those big guys will get better and better as long as the perimeter players can score. Lucas fouled before the shot. No basket. It goes on Drew. Doubleheader action tomorrow night with more from the Big Ten ACC Challenge. It starts at 7.15 Eastern time here on ESPN. Illinois and Clemson, the Illini, struggling recently. Then Duke is up in Madison to take on the Badgers. Tomorrow night also the start of Jimmy V. Week here on the ESPN Family of Networks as Del Monroe gets the lay-in. That ball roll looks a lot better than he looked last year. You can see he's recovering from that yep. knee injury. Turnover Carolina. Little spurt maybe here for Michigan State. Allen passed up the three, then had the two blocks. I'll tell you one thing about both clubs, they'll always play hard. 
and always play with some passion. You don't have the kind of success they've had in North Carolina and Michigan State and not play with emotion and passion. Both teams, national championships under their current coaches. Both teams, multiple Final Fours this decade. Offensive foul. Well, you want to talk about passion. How about the guys wearing the suits there? I tell you, they're working like you can't believe on that sideline. Look at Mr. Montgomery, the assistant. Look at him. I mean, he's sweating. And look at Tom Izzo. Yeah. He's lucky he's got all that cash to buy some new suits. Mark Montgomery, associate head coach of Michigan State. The only thing keeping Roy Williams from doing the same on the Carolina bench is, his show. is surgery for a torn labrum a week ago. He's got his arm in his sling, and he just can't move around as well as he'd like. I tell you one thing, though. No. It's got to make that pain go away the way those shots are falling down. That's better than any kind of medicine you can ever take. <laughs> Four minutes into the second half, Drew lost it. Spartans have it. Summers tripped up, gave it back to Drew, looking for the foul call. So's his coach, Travis Ware, wide open. Look at that hustler on the glass. Look at him hustling. Michigan State ball. When we come back, Ball Dome Index says all those that gave the edge. Big Ten is the best conference in America. Better do a little reevaluating because I got a funny feeling there's a conference with teams like Connecticut, Villanova, oh, wow. and company. The wow. Big East loaded. Well, right now the Big loaded. Ten try to win this challenge for the first time ever, and they're up three to one right now. And wholesale changes. Deion Thompson, Tyler Zeller, Dexter Strickland. Here comes a new wave of Tar Heels. You know, we're talking about the ACC Big Ten Challenge, but I mentioned the Big East. I mean, think about Syracuse, Louisville, all those clubs. The conference is lost. Cincinnati is going to be good. St. John's hasn't lost. Well, we're going to see four Big East teams in person next week in New York. Jimmy V will see uh, Pittsburgh against Indiana. We'll see Georgetown against Butler. The next night, the Big East SEC showdown. We will see St. John's against Georgia and UConn against Kentucky. Calipari against Mr. Calhoun. That's oh. worth the price of the Oh, you got that right. North Carolina foul. Well, here are the cumulative records of the big six conferences. And right now, I mean, the Pac-10 is struggling. We've seen that in a number of key games early on this season. And there's the Big East right at the top of the list. You know, UCLA lost three games in a tournament. What do you think that's ever happened before? Those are the records entering tonight. Wow. Everything's going in. Everything is going down. Lucas. Summers. The length of Henson bothering the shooters. You know, you saw those numbers up there. I think that's the season because a lot of cupcakes. Right, it's early, yep. Yeah. The length of Henson bothering Summers. Up there, one thing. They look like a totally different team than when we watched against Syracuse. Lucius. Partially blocked. Great defensive effort right there by North Carolina. See that 2-3 zone with the length that Syracuse had and the Wesley Johnson show. They just were too physical on the inside as well. Onowaku and Jackson, too. Michigan State doesn't have guys that big. Zeller again, wild shot. Rebound green. Lucas pushing. Over Henson. And Summers with the follow. Summers with a good offensive rebound. Very explosive team. Michigan State is going to spurt quickly get right back in. Only down 13. This was the lineup they had on the floor in the first half, except maybe Allen instead of Summers when they went on that spurt. Lucius was in there with Lucas, and Rowe was in there as well. Let's find out a little bit more on Roy Williams and his recent milestone. Here's Doris Burke. Yeah, win number 600. He said 500 was a big one. Anything with double zeros, it's a big deal. And it was reached on Sunday against Nevada. And what he was most pleased about, not the 600. He said, the thing I like most about that game is in the final 10 minutes, my guys finally competed and showed toughness. Against Syracuse in New York, he said, ah, we fought a little bit, but didn't show the kind of grit and competitive spirit that we needed. He felt like that might have been a turning point. And they don't have to look very far for inspiration for toughness, guys, as you see Roy Williams get animated. I'll tell you, Doris, he's the third quickest going to the 600 mark. Number one was Adolf Rupp, took 704 games. Jerry Dorcanian took 720. Roy Williams, 739. John Wooden, 755. And Dean Smith, 773. Deion Thompson again. Thompson and Davis having their way inside with the Michigan State. And they had their way inside against the body as well. Put 39 on the board. 
Rebound. This crowd has been alive, man. This crowd is really alive. Where's Sammy for some, man? Where's Sammy? <laughs> Sam's going to get to this house. Little floater by Kaylin Lucas, and the deficit is 13. Looking inside again. Why not? Zeller, two more. Bring the ball into the low post. They can really finish. Oh, slow down. Slow down. Yeah, no, That's about four or five times tonight. Michigan State's beating him down the floor. And they beat him down the low. Turn around. Oh. Play there, Marcus Guignard. It's a little fast break drill. Transition basketball up and down. I love it. Indianapolis Raceway. Run, baby, run. Time oh, Get the thoroughbreds out, baby. They're up and down. We must be at Churchill Downs. I tell you one thing, Bobby Bonnet should have been treated a heck of a lot better than he was treated at the end. And why is Jimbo Fisher the answer? He's been on the staff for the last few years and they haven't won. I really wonder about that. He couldn't get one more year. That's all he wanted. He deserved it. Lots more on that story coming up on SportsCenter, including as well all the highlights of the Big Ten ACC Challenge. And look at Carolina. Shooting, shooting lights out. Eight for ten this half, almost 70% of the game, leading by 15. How are you going to beat a club when they're shooting that well? Wesley McDonald, no. And a Carolina foul. Well, fasten your seatbelts because these two teams are getting up and down the court. Sometimes it looks like they're going this fast. Wow. Watch how quickly Michigan State gets down the floor. They go back the other way. Carolina says, hey, we're going to go back the other way. I mean, that's a transition trip. Run, baby, run. Wow. They were fast. I didn't realize until I watched those replays. I mean, he's shooting like that. You know, we thought about it. We talked to Roy about it. He said he had a team that shot 27% once and won a game. Yep. Couldn't believe it. Tough one by Draymond Green. The size of Thompson bothering him. Lucius misses the three. Michigan State ball. Timeout on the floor. The lead is 15. Dick, it's a word you've used on a number of occasions tonight. Carolina's got balance. I'll tell one thing. There goes Drew showing his ability. Then we go inside to Davis. They're 11 for 11, those two guys. And this guy's no slouch. He's 6 for 10, Deion Thompson. I mean, 11 for 11. Are you kidding me? That's, I mean, how are you going to beat that? 66% <laughs> on the game. 5 for 7 from three-point range. Michigan State's only 1 for 9. Michigan State's got 13 offensive rebounds to 6 for Carolina. Michigan Michigan State's turned it over less, but when a team's shooting 66%, not a whole lot you can do. Tell you one thing, you better defend if you want a chance to win. We saw that with Duke against Connecticut. I mean, Duke shot 28%, but they defended so well. And they got more athleticism than people believe. Oh, oh, Singler and Shire, and you certainly look at the Nolan Swalkins, yeah. Nolan Smith. Summers from the baseline. What a rebound by Henson. See that rebound? Wow. You see the skills he's possessed. There's been glimpses here of absolute greatness potential. Three freshmen in the back. game right now. Nobody here back. goes Morgan. Oh, what a jam. Up, up, and away. I told you during the timeout, this baby's not over yet. This baby is not ready to be tucked away in the book. I mean, you just see that this club is capable of going on an explosive run. Foul on Henson. Morgan making a statement. Can't teach that. Yep. Senior out of Canton, Ohio, so highly touted. Last year, Dick, had mono, broke his nose. This year, about the worst sprained ankle Tom Izzo says he's ever seen. Cost him several weeks. He missed a game, not 100% for a long time. But you can see glimpses as he gets healthier of the star potential that Raymar Morgan has. He went to a great high school, McKinley. He produced some great players years ago from Michigan. Phil Hubbard, Gary Pant. Zeller. Summers the rebound, Henson the save, but the Michigan State's got it, they've got numbers. Summers inside, here they come. That's that quickness, I gotta get back defensively. Strickland challenges and draws the foul. I tell you what, I didn't know Strickland was as quick as I've seen Agreed. here. We didn't see that in New York at all, he was very tentative. Well, how about the quickness the other way by the Spartans? There it is, that save, goes into the hands of Michigan State. That's a good drive to the goal. Summers from the score. Thank you, Strickland. You're talking about a high school. 
Irving's going to be going to Duke. Howard Garfinkel told me that Irving's going to be the answer to John Wall next year as a freshman down at Duke. And then they got a kid, Gilchrist. Everybody says he's the best junior in America. And they had Strickland. Zeller out, but no break. Ed Davis comes in. David Ware's in the game now for Carolina as well. Dexter Strickland at the line, giving North Carolina some of the best minutes he's given them this season. You know, Dan, the last four teams to go to the Final Four three straight years. You had UCLA, Michigan State, Kentucky, and Duke were in the late and early era. They're trying to go three in a row. And the way this club's going to get better and better, don't count them out. Carolina, who you're yes, talking sir. about. Yep. Carolina went three in a row back in the 60s. Morgan needs help. Now Lucas. Ten to shoot. Every possession now starts to get bigger and bigger for Michigan State. Got to get a shot off. Good defensive effort by North Carolina. That's impressed me today as well. Seeing them match up defensively with the athletes that they're facing. You know, they've given up 58 points. That may sound like a lot, but the pace has been up and down so many more possessions in this kind of a game than a normal game. Absolutely. The tempo's been so quick. The Big Ten leading 3-1, to one, as you saw, in the Big oh. Ten ACC Challenge, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. The Big Ten has never won this event. Should have had the ball at tops in a moment earlier. Got it to him a little bit too late. Give it now. You got to know when to get up the ball. Crash on the glass. They've got it again, but a turnover. That's three times he's... And Lucas is fouled and will shoot. Strickland called. See, if I'm Michigan State right now, the conversion, he was trying to get a little one-on-one. He's going to slide right down to the lane. There he is. Right there. Should have given it to him a little bit sooner. Hey, right now, if I'm Michigan State, I convert here. I go to some work pressure. I really go to some trapping. Now, Drew's not in the game right now. Strickland, the backup point guard, who's really almost more comfortable with the two-guard spot, is running the show. See, I knew you ran on top of it. I knew you ran on top of it. You're right there, Coach Schumann. <laughs> Coach Schumann knows the game. A lot of time left. Almost 10 minutes, and slowly but surely, Michigan State's chipping away. They are coming back. Yep. My wife, she's in trouble with me. She didn't come to the game today because she went to see Miley Cyrus and my grandkids and my daughters. How could she miss a Michigan State North Carolina guy? We're going to have a battle. Oh, we're going to have a battle. you know what's going to happen? You're going to lose again. <laughs> Miley Cyrus over this. Ten-point game. Garrett Sherman back into the game and now for Michigan State. He's a big body on the inside. Going to be a good player eventually. Freshman has to guard the senior and Thompson is still by Rowe. Lucas didn't see Strickland. A good hustle on D by Strickland. I got a feeling that you're going to see Roy Williams look down that bench and pull upon Mr. Drew to get back on the floor. Turnovers have been really the story this year with yeah. North Carolina. Had too many. The lead was as big as 19 at one point, down to 10. And as you said, Dick, here comes Drew getting ready to check back in. Wow. Wow. You're a step ahead. <laughs> No, never a step ahead of Roy Williams. The lob, too high. Morgan throws it out of bounds. Thursday night at 9 Eastern, it's a Pac-10 battle for the Rose Bowl. The winner takes all in this in-state rivalry between number 16 Oregon State and number 7 Oregon. The Rose Bowl race on college football primetime right here on ESPN. Drew back in at the point. Five for five. He and Davis, 11 for 11 between them. Five assists, three turnovers tonight for Drew. Davis inside. How do you stop him? He is absolutely so talented. I just think if he gets hungry to want to score, guys like him and Monroe, you can't teach the things they can do with their size. Monroe, I'm talking about Greg Georgetown. Monroe, Georgetown, yep. Raymar Morgan, it'll count and a foul. Morgan having a strong game. Bench jumps with jubilation there in Spartan country. You got it down to 10, my friend. Yep. I get the single digits here. Raymar Morgan up to 16 as he goes to the line, and Green is back into the game for Michigan State. 
Now you saw it briefly. Have a, a longer look. You want to be a head coach? You got a chance to score. <laughs> Boy, he's got a great matchup. Get Magic Johnson. He would have delivered that pass to Rizzo. He would have delivered it to Greg Kelsey. Sherman working hard, but it's the Tar Heels who come up with the ball. That was some combination, Magic to Kelsey. 1979 national chance. They won again under Tom Izzo in 2000 with the Flintstones. The team Cleaves and company. Thompson the fadeaway and a foul on Draymond Green. Green gives away some size. That's Warren, isn't yeah. it? And that's the problem. When Tom Izzo's got his best players in the game, his front court guys are 6'6 to 6'8, and Roy Williams' front court guys are 6'9 to 7 feet. That's a big difference, yeah. mathematics. Sure. I could figure that out and I didn't go to Harvard. <laughs> Here's 6'9 the senior, Deion Thompson. 13 for him. Here comes Rowe. Here comes Lucius. Boy, they'll get even smaller now. Although this was an effective lineup at times in the first half and has been at times this year with Lucas and Lucius on the court at the same time. You know, how many programs can lose 2,872 points, 1,219 rebounds from a superstar like Tyler Hansbrough, lose a backcourt like Lawson and Ellington, a guy in the wing like Green, and come back and be preseason one of the top 10 teams in America? Not many programs. No. North Carolina can do something like that. Duke, Kentucky. Special programs where they just year after year keep it rolling with one great recruit after another. Lucas behind the back, pull up jumper, way short, way left. And it'll be Carolina ball. Not a good possession right there. Carolina now has got to manage the clock, play with the ball, look for good shots. Don't rush the action. David Ware. Nice look to Drew. That's Zeller. Got him now. Zeller throws it off the glass. Davis and a foul. Davis with the offensive rebound draws the foul. Hey, Zeller's younger brother's quite a player. Everybody's going to be chasing him. A 12-point lead, rather, for Carolina. Well, what was it like in the locker room after Carolina won the national championship? You'll find out. It didn't really hurt them that hey. much. It's, yeah. North Carolina winning the national championship a year ago, 2009, beating Michigan State in the championship game, the title game in Detroit. What was the scene like in the locker room as soon as they won? How about them Tar Heels? Yeah. One more block, yeah! yeah. Man, that's when he hurt his shoulder. I tell you, one thing, winning can make you do some wacky yeah. things. Hey, talking about winning, you look at some of the streaks out there in the NCAA. Michigan State's got 12 straight times. You got Duke at 14, Kansas at 20. Arizona at 25. How about that? Could be in Some jeopardy. Some balls the last couple of years. Could be yeah. in jeopardy this year. Straight in, Philly. Straight in. Get it. In and out for Davis. 13-point lead Carolina under eight to go. Capacity and a loud crowd. Here with the Smith Center in Chapel Hill. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Doris Burke. Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Rowe, Zeller won't leave his feet. Big guys for Carolina doing a good job not biting. Rowe trying to take him one along. Rowe would have been a McDonald's All-American hanging up and into his senior year. Lucius gets a good look. Michigan stayed one for ten from three-point range. And that's been a big difference. Carolina's got five for seven on the line. And a foul away from the ball going against the Spartans. They've already got foul trouble. Who's that one on Rowe? Delvon Rowe just fouled out of the game. North Carolina's got that big date with Texas. You and I will be down there. Dallas Cowboys Stadium. 
should be real special. Well, if we get a chance ten. to meet Jerry Jones. <laughs> wow. Eight points, ten rebounds for Rowe in 29 minutes tonight. Hope Jerry brings his checkbook and takes us out for some lunch and dinner. Nice. Be nice of him. So Rowe leaves Green, who's got four fouls, is going to have to come back in for Michigan State. Uh, one of the big stories tonight, the shooting, especially Davis and Drew. Neither one of them has missed a shot. Look at this guy. He's only 5 for 11. What is happening to Dion? And I don't mean Dion and the Belmonts. You don't remember Dion and the Belmonts. They were good years ago, baby. Hey, Roy Williams is busy also with his new book, Hard Work, going all over, signing the book. It's on a bestseller list. Did it with Tim Crothers from Out of Sports Illustrated. And also a new book out, Outstanding, called Light Blue Rain by Art Shansky. Forward by Dean Smith. Knows a little bit about North Carolina basketball. Zeller misses the front end. By the way, we talked about Roy Williams' shoulder before, how he really hurt, hurt it. Uh, not to make light of the situation at a golf tournament, it was wet and he slipped on some stairs going up the stairs, fell backwards, and landed on the concrete stairs on the back of his shoulder, tore the labrum and the biceps tendon, had surgery less than a week ago. Rebound Davis. Nice Davis with that rebound. Should have fallen by some of Dr. Chris Forzo. He's an expert with shoulders and elbows in the hands. Carolina foul going against Zeller. Number two on him. So Roy Williams will have a swing on for several weeks. As Doris told you earlier, sleeping in a recliner just a couple of hours at a time, not getting a lot of rest, on some pain medication, really having to you know, kind of fight his way through it over the last few days. And he had a way for a time segment, as Doris said earlier, where he can have the surgery. The injury actually happened back to early October. And a kickball. Also, you see the ribbon on the shirt of Roy Williams, and all the UNC coaches have them. December 1st, 1988 was the first World AIDS Day. And today, also the 1st of December, we, uh, the Carolina coaches inviting you to join a triad, training to reduce the incidence of AIDS-related deaths. That is what the ribbon is in support of. Some of the great organizations. Yeah, and something that Trent Johnson, the LSU head coach who we saw last week, he has organized the effort among basketball coaches. So hats off to Coach Johnson. Down to an 11-point lead now for Carolina. Over six minutes to go. Drew, two-man game with Thompson. Tonight you're going to play smart basketball. you got to utilize Thompson. And why not get it utilized also Davis? Drew finally, finally missed, a shot. missed a shot. And Deion Thompson is called for the foul. It's a big segment coming up right now for Michigan State. The next two minutes will dictate whether or not they can really get back in the game. And Dick, 10th team foul on Carolina. Two shots coming for Michigan State. Delvon Rowe has fouled out of the game. So Michigan State's without one of their key players. Got to convert on that free throw line. There's no putting this guy on the sideline. He's fought hard to get to the top of the mountain. And his buddy Steve Mariucci grew up together in high school up in the peninsula. For the first time tonight, we see Austin Thornton, a redshirt sophomore out of Sand Lake, Michigan. Shoot the three. Yeah, 6'5", and he can stroke it. Shoot the three. Nothing like having guys that can make that three. Another rebound for Davis and a foul on Morgan. That'll be the 10th team foul on the Spartans. Two shots coming for Carolina. Doubleheader action tomorrow night with more from the Big Ten ACC Challenge. It begins at 7.15 Eastern Time. Illinois is at Clemson. And then at 9.15, Duke and Wisconsin. A Big Ten ACC action tomorrow night, the beginning of Jimmy V Week here on ESPN. You know, Clemson had a good win over Butler. Illinois lost to Utah and the Bradley. But they're a better team than what they've shown early. they got a couple of young kids in there, Paul and Richardson. That Duke-Wisconsin matchup's going to be one heck of a basketball game. When you look at Wisconsin, certainly when you talk about Bo Ryan, these kids find a way to win up at Madison. Very they tough. Can, they compete. But, you know, Mike Krzyzewski told us we want those kind of games. They got a game coming up with Gonzaga as well. Davis now 4 of 6 from the line. They led by as many as 19 in the first half. It was 16 at the half. Michigan State's gotten it as close as 10 here in the second half. Scotty reports it there right about four, and that's exactly what Graves did. Lucas retains possession. Allen from the corner. 
And the follow for Morgan. They're into single digits. Raymond Morgan has got all kinds of ability. Got 18 points tonight. Slowly creeping back in the game. Yeah. I mean, you can't maintain the way they were shooting the ball, sustain that. If you look at North Carolina. They were up at 66%. They're down to 60 now, but that'll go up a little bit on the runner by Drew. I'll tell you one thing about Drew. I'll tell you something else going up. His stock is going up. His stock is going up. He's not going to be lost because there aren't many losses, but he's going to be a heck of a little good college player. Better than what a lot of people thought. There he is, Drew, with a lot of confidence. Making plays down the stretch. Six for seven, 13 points. Well, they had a hang on against Ohio State. Yep. They had a big lead, and all of a sudden the Buckeyes made a little run. And he missed some free throws, but then he made two big free throws at the end of the game. So Drew's encountering a lot of pressure situations in the last couple of weeks. And that's what you want to happen before you have the lead play. Good defense by Davis, and he's got it. Now you got to back it up. Now you got to back it up. Got to be cerebral right now. Yes, sir. See? Back it up. Little cerebral, just like his dad was. Under five to go. Nice look. Davis. He went to the right guy. He just came up empty there. That was a good too bad play. Michigan State ball for more on Davis. Let's check in with Doris. Well, an improved Ed Davis is no surprise. He spent much of the summer working with his father, Terry, a 10-year NBA veteran. He said, listen, it was tough. He doesn't do a lot of joking around about basketball. The NBA was his job, and he took it seriously. And Terry says, if he goes in there with a weak layup, he knows he has to answer to me. We're not seeing any of that tonight from Davis, Dan. I'll tell you one thing, guys. His father's going to get all over him. I'm missing that layup. He just missed it. So. <laughs> You're too tough. A tough crowd. His scoring's almost doubled from a year ago, and he's up more than three rebounds a game. Lucius. And it goes. What a shot. Circus shot by Lucius, grimacing and reaching for his right knee as he gets back on defense. Well, remember, he broke his foot against North Carolina in the yeah. championship game. And he had a didn't heal properly. Surgery twice, once in April, again in August. Drew looking for Thompson. Ginyard. Rebound Morgan. Here they come. A chance to get it closer than they've been the entire half. They need a big three. Somebody's got to find an open three. I tell you, Mike Montgomery is coaching like you can't. Mark Montgomery is coaching like you can't believe on that side. Officials trying to keep the Michigan State coaching staff off the court. They thought they got Thornton open, and right in his face, Graves did a great job for Limited D. Right up in Thornton's face. Tom Izzo calls a timeout. Didn't like the way that possession was looking. 30-second timeout taken by Coach Izzo. Well, the lead is down to nine. It was as high as 19. How's Michigan State gotten back into it? Well, you know, Summers has certainly helped them here. There he is, draining the shot. Came out slow in the first half. There he is, another one. Summers had a big game, and that win over Gonzaga. There he is with the drive. He's been a big lift. I mean, there's 324 left in the game, man. This game is far from over, especially with the explosiveness of Michigan State. And keep in mind, obviously, a lot of changes for these two teams, so you can't really call it a rematch. Yeah, no rematch. But for the guys wearing green, the guys who played in those games last year, they're angry. They're, they've got a chip on their shoulder. This means a lot to them. They were they were beaten up pretty handily a couple of times last year. Yeah, there's no question. They were humiliated. They were embarrassed. The game we did in the challenge, it was absolutely a, a blowout. It was an M&M mismatch and the same in the national championship. Three and a half to go here in the second half. Carolina's 19-point lead is down to nine. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Doris Burke, Chapel Hill. Big 10 ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Delvon Rose fouled out for Michigan State. Draymond Green is playing with four, but the Spartans, it hasn't been a quick run. Look at this shot. One on the shot clock and an air ball by Lucas. They come out of a timeout, and they don't get anything. They don't get a decent look at all. Tom Izzo's got to be really frustrated and upset with that possession. Down by nine, 316 to go. So, Carla, Virginia Tech wins and North Carolina wins. It'll be 3-3 at the end of tonight over the five more games tomorrow on the ESPN family of networks. Sports Center next on ESPN. Big night all around sports and some great basketball here for the Big Ten ACC Challenge.
play smart right now. You gotta play smart. This is a blown up time for a lot of these young kids. Will Graves, tough shot. Banks at home, the lead's 11. What a nice job right there. Get a little isolation, took some time off the clock. Putting pressure now on Michigan State. And now towards the end of the game, Roy Williams has gone back to his most experienced players. Lucas, an offensive rebound. Summers for three. Oh, Summers really has done a heck of a job here in the second half. Down to eight. That's they, what that three-point shot will do for you. And they're finally starting to heat up. Not very much, but Michigan State knocking down a couple of big shots in the last few minutes. See, now you want to play a little two-man game, but either Drew or Davis or Drew or Thompson. Take some time off the clock. Thompson for three. That's the guy you want shooting the three right there. Under two to go. It's a must possession. You know about must possession. Oh, good timeout. Another timeout taken by Tom Izzo. He's got one remaining. Let's look at some of the key plays from tonight's game if you're just joining us. How about the steal right here? Great minute stick in the first half from Dexter Strickland. Yeah, Strickland with the steal, Davis with the score. Then Strickland now with the jumper from the perimeter. Diaper Dandy knocking down some big shots. And what about Summers here in the second half? What a great job, Morgan. And Lucius in the lane with the little scoop shot. And then here comes Summers. And he got a fire here in the second half. There he is knocking down a trifecta. Ed Davis leads the Tar Heels with 18 points. Raymar Morgan leads the Spartans with 18 points. Delvon Rose fouled out. Draymond Green of Michigan State's playing with four. Here's a must possession. Yeah. Hey, you know, nobody talks about Northwestern and the job Bill Carmody's done. I mean, last week they beat Notre Dame, they beat Iowa State. Lucas the floater down to six. But he was MVP. Oh, steal. The Nearly stolen. Lucas shaking up. Morgan ran into his own teammate. Lucas shaking up. Davis the slam. What a series of events. Well, How different around. that could have been. Yeah. That was a four-point turnaround. Instead of it being like 80-76. And their most a, important player is shaking up. Here's a four-point turnaround. They yep. had to steal for the layup. Instead of getting a layup, North Carolina played very smart. Good IQ basketball-wise went inside. I mean, here's the steal. Ooh. They got the steal. They collide. Lose the ball. Davis gets it. And then he goes back down and scores. While they're laying on the floor, they had the numbers. They had the numbers. And Lucas See? running right into the midsection of his teammate Morgan. And they got the numbers on the yeah. inside now. And they take advantage of Davis scores. What a big one. That was a four-point turnaround. Instead of being down four to down eight. Summers. Yeah. Green just That's took it away and lays it back in. Lucas is okay. He's still in there. And it's down to six again. But the clock is now the ally of the Tar Heels. I love the toughness of Green. Thompson in a hurry turns it over. And that's been the story. Turnovers in their dilemma. You gotta know when to back it out. You gotta know when to score. You gotta know score situation. A lot of kids don't understand time score situation. Six point game. Very important to know those three factors when you come down the stretch of the game. And now the clock started before the ball was touched inbounds. Lucas purposely was letting it bounce up the court to delay the clock starting, but it started. So they got to put a few, I think 116 is where it was when the play began. See, that's smart now by Drew. Extended defensively, Roy Williams had to extend, so he cannot delay bringing the ball in. And back to 116, that's where it started, yeah. so they got it right. Never should have started there. See, right now they're going to step a little bit defensively to take a little time off the clock. Now it starts the question. He touches it. Summers gets a look. Over the back, Draymond Green, and he's fouled out. That was a good call. Good call by Brian Percy. He and Roger Harris were really right on it. No doubt about that, Paul. Valiant effort reflecting the personality of Thomas. So 
13 points, seven rebounds for Draymond Green, just a sophomore, but really becoming a leader on this Michigan State team. Look at him rallying his teammates as he fouls out, and this is what he said after the loss to Carolina in the championship game last year. He compared them to Carolina the year before when they got blown out by Kansas in the national semifinal, and he said, look what happened to them and look what they accomplished. That's what he called on his teammates for in the locker room after they lost in Detroit last year. You know, I like that out of him. That shows you that's a historian yeah. that he studies the game. He must sit down with our people like Andy Katz and Dana O'Neill. He's in the house here today. ESPN.com will read a story the one. Look at this line of it out for Michigan State with a row and green out. Four guards and Morgan, who's really a wing player. They got a lot of shooters, but they don't have any size. Yeah, we gotta have some shooters right now. Quickness. He's been a star of stars, this guy. Davis has been a star on the glass, scoring inside. Already a career high, 21 points. To me, looking at his ability, he should be a regular 2012 man. Every night. He and Monroe, to me, should have 2012 in the book. Nice stroke from the line. Timeout, Carolina. Well, in the first half, we told you about the Sports Nation poll on ESPN.com, which has been the program of the decade in college basketball. Duke, Florida, Kansas, Michigan State, and Carolina, they've all won at least one national championship. Florida and North Carolina have won two. The results are lopsided, nearly 70,000 votes so far, and the results easily, according to you, give it to North Carolina. Well, do you think possibly a little bit swing there because many Carolina fans are watching the game? You're sharp. <laughs> You're sharp. <laughs> I mean, let's be real about it. But you said you would pick Carolina. I would pick Carolina, yes. yeah, because the two national titles. Right. I think the reward, Doris said it so well. She does it so effectively. She said, hey, the ultimate goal is to win the national title. Well, they won two national titles in a decade, and he's only been there like six years. This is his seventh, starting his seventh for Roy Williams. He was the perfect hire for this place. And but something it, tells me if you and I are sitting here ten years from now talking about the next decade, Carolina line is going to be on the list again and so will Michigan State. Something tells me if I'm sitting here 10 years from now, I'm a lucky lucky guy. <laughs> Lucas will finish. It's down to six, but under a minute to go. Here comes the pressure. Trying to two possessions with the three. Got to hope they miss some free throws. Now he gets into a free throw contest. You miss the free, gives him an opportunity. All right, Dick, sing the praises of Ed Davis. Oh, what can he do on the inside? He's long, he's lean, and he can be mean, and he's so talented. He's got those long arms, that quickness. Good first step. Knows how to play down in the box. And a career high in points tonight. At the line, Strickland. Chris Strickland now getting some key, key minutes. Should help his confidence if the coach feels this way about him. Put him on the floor with 56 seconds in a six point game. This is a call, but they get it back. Will Graves tapped it out. Different size on the inside. Smart play by Graves. We talk about a play that, you know, you might not remember it with everything else that's happened, but how big is this play by Will Graves? Very smart by Graves. There he is. He knew ahead of time what he was going to do if the ball came his way. You talk about a guy that had a tough, got suspended last year. Yeah, second half of the season as Drew knocks down the first. Wasn't allowed to be part of the team with the jersey on even. Well, he says it really shook him up, yes, forced sir. him to grow up, learn some lessons, and he, he feels he's come back to change guy this year. Well, he's from Greensboro. They played in Greensboro there. First two rounds, he can be part of it. He won a high school championship when he played in Greensboro. And that play just earned his team two points after the free throws by Drew. Lucas again. How tough is he? He's sensational. You talk about MVP in the Big Ten. It'll come down between Lucas, Hubble, and Turner, and Manny Harris. Caleb Battle I'm from up. Penn State. I've got none. We've seen this kind of a drive from Caleb Lucas four or five times tonight. He's got a mini version. I want to say he's Chris Paul, but he's got a mini version of Chris Paul with his speed and quickness and the way he gets into a hole. He sees a hole in the defense. Then he can complete the play. Knows how to finalize. But what's coming up for the Spartans? Win, 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 win. Tough one, win. 
He's got five. He can take a little vacation. Let Montgomery coach him. <laughs> Come on, man. He can take a little vacation right there. He got five that are a blow. I mean, right there, but you know what? You deserve to do that when you really have a program like Michigan State, and they got to go into the Big Ten. But come on now. You and I, I think, could coach them to five of those games. One of them could be kind of tough. Yeah. <laughs> what about Carolina? They've also got some big games coming up. We saw Michigan State against Texas. Carolina will take on Texas as well. We'll have that one for you from Cowboys Stadium. Got a big one against Kentucky coming up this week. Yeah, Kentucky, that'll be interesting. John Calabari, they have not been tested yet in terms of playing against big time competition. They were tested at the struggle with Miami over Ohio and had a couple of those. That'll be a little bit of a scenario where they'll find out a little bit about their strengths and weaknesses against North Carolina. Two winning his programs in all of basketball. Both of them closing in on 2,000 wins for their programs. And we're going to have a major announcement at the Jimmy V about our gala who we're going to honor for the following year. Well, teaser, I like that. Oh, There's yeah, good. it's going to be major. There's major. at 1995 and a Carolina not far behind. The two winningest programs in college basketball history. Stolen by Lucas. They Got need it. It's big. That's big. Air ball by Lucius. Carolina ball. How big would have that been had that gone down? Two for 16 as a team from three-point range. Should have been three. There was one earlier they should have had that was taken away. Chris Allen with a foul. Hey, Roy, take it easy with that shoulder, Roy. Take it easy. Only had a surgery a week ago. Showing what a competitor, a fierce recruiter, a competitor in a game, a competitor in practice, passion, incredible winner. Ginyard at the line. Ten years served as an assistant here with Bill Guthridge. Eddie Fogler and Phil Ford on your staff for a while. Dean Smith was the boss. They did it again. The same guy, the same play, the same results. And that's how you win basketball games. Yeah. All the little things add up. All the things you don't see, as you said so well, Mr. Schulman, in the box score. Mr. Graves will get a little salute from the coaching staff. Watch this right now. There he is. Back slapping it. And Drew back to the line. Drew's got to thank him. He's given Drew four points. That's right. <laughs> He's given Drew four points. A career high in the points tonight for Larry Drew. Tell you what, coming off the game against Nevada, where he hit those two big threes, had ten assists, one turnover. Growing up, huh? up. He's growing up quickly. He's saying, people, I'm ready to play. I'm getting ready for ACC action. I'm getting ready for that Duke Carolina battle. So are you. There are two so of them. Yeah. Lucius. Strickland got a hand on it. It's over, my friends. It's over now. Put it in the book. Put it in the book. Summers lays it in. One step closer. Yep. And there with total. And one last foul, perhaps. Well, the first thing that jumps out at you statistically tonight, Michigan State, a lot of good shooters on this team, but they didn't show it tonight. Yeah, they really struggled shooting that three. Two for 18, put the two in the two is one. Two for 18, it's two in the 18, nine. One out of nine if you break it down. <laughs> one out of nine. That's good. Six-point lead, look who's back at the line, the guy who keeps knocking them down. Who are you going to pick as the star of the game? you got to pick one guy right now and give a trophy to the star of the game. I would think Ed Davis. I would give it to Davis, but think about it. I would give a lot of thought to Mr. Drew. No question. A lot of yeah, thought Drew's to Drew's got Drew. 17 points and six assists, and Davis has 22 points and six rebounds. Well, you also gave him some good balance, yep. more balance by being effective on the perimeter. you got to have that balance inside and outside. That's why I like the Shire single combination and Nolan Smith as well. Oh, I better not talk about Duke here. I'm in North Carolina. I, I can't talk about Duke here. Oh, don't let me we sit out We want to get you out of here safely. Don't tonight. let me sit out word here. Lucas. Why Williams coaching his heart out. I love that kind of competitiveness. Look at that. Look at him coaching his heart out. Make sure they add to the mix. Are you kidding me? Bullock, Marshall, Harrison Barnes? Wow. Reloading, huh? 
Well, so is Michigan State. They go Mason and Davis. They got some great kids coming yep. in. Adrian Payne, Russell Bird, Keith Hopley. It's over. Carolina beats Michigan State again. Beat him twice last year. Beat him again here in the Big Ten ACC Challenge tonight. Big nights for Larry Drew, Ed Davis, among others. 89-82 Carolina is your final.